Live from the CBS Broadcast Center in Los Angeles, this is CBS 2 News at 11 p.m. Tonight, Florence's fury is being blamed for at least 12 deaths, and it's left more than a million homes and businesses without power. Floodwaters are still rising in many areas and may not peak until tomorrow. Tonight, emergency officials in North Carolina called it a worst case scenario. The storm is parked over the state, dumping a relentless onslaught of rain. Here's a live look at the radar. Almost 48 hours after it made landfall as a Category 1 hurricane, Florence has barely moved. CBS 2's Christy Fajardo has been following the rescues and the damage from Florence all night long. She's here with late breaking details. Christy. Yeah, Suzanne and Peter, Florence has sped up a little, but is still moving at a glacial six miles an hour, dumping so much rain it could trigger epic flooding. Rain is hammering the Carolinas and causing Hello. catastrophic flooding. Florence is moving slowly, but the water is rising quickly. I'm glad you're okay, girl. And residents in her path, like Tia Cherry, who didn't evacuate, soon wish they had. A storm chaser with a boat rescued her and her family. How quickly did that water come on? It was uh, fast. That's all I can say is fast. Get somewhere is in a blink of an eye. My cousin looked and he turned around and it was our street was flooded that fast. That's why firefighters are going door to door in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Florence could dump another foot and a half of rain before she moves on, swelling inland rivers to dangerous levels in the next few days. If you are in these areas, this is a serious, life threatening matter. If you are refusing to leave during this mandatory evacuation, then you need to do things like notify your legal next of kin because the loss of life is very, very Possible. The Cape Fear River is living up to its name. Already rising, it could double in size and crest at a deadly 62 feet. Already, the Coast Guard is busy plucking survivors, one by one, from floodwaters, like this elderly woman on crutches in Jacksonville who crawled into the basket. We're not through this storm. There's several more days of rain to come, so there may be people that are going to be in distress or in distress right now. So my advice to you is to listen to your local emergency management officials. Stay put until it's safe to get, to, to get outside. Throughout the region, homes have become islands. Over a million customers are without power as Florence toppled power lines and blew down trees. In New Bern, more than 400 people had to be rescued. And 4,200 homes have been damaged or destroyed. And as waters recede, neighbors come home. This is all that was left of Ruby and Bill's home of 12 years. Okay, Ruby. I need some help to get up. I okay. can't get up. And it's not just their lives that have changed. The 10 foot storm surge was so powerful it pushed boats into homes and cut off whole communities. It's been a tough couple of days for you, though, I imagine. Yes. Yes. It chokes you up a little bit. Yes. Yes. And this weekend, hundreds of flights to and from the region have been canceled because of Florence. Peter, back to you. Such a heartbreaking situation out mm -hmm. there, Christy. Thanks. Now to CBS2 meteorologist Marquita Brown, who is tracking Florence. Marquina. Yeah, uh, guys, I mentioned this to you earlier, but this tropical system is unlike anything I've ever seen. Uh, rarely do you see a system move this slow for this long. We are talking about folks getting inundated with all of this water. We have reports from some parts of North Carolina where folks are seeing over 26 inches of rain. And when you take a look at what's going on again, when you've got it moving to the west at only six miles an hour, they've got a long way to go to still deal with this rain out on the water. We've got still lots of rain bands. We are seeing it weakening, though, of course, hopefully it will be a tropical depression as we head toward tomorrow. But even so, it is still going to be putting down lots and lots of rain. I'll be very interested to see uh, some of these rain amounts as we head toward uh, the beginning of next work week and even the middle to see how much rain Florence actually ends up putting down. We'll also talk about the weather here in Southern California as we head toward the middle of the week. We've got some downward temperatures coming our way. We'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. Guys, back to you. All right, we'll check back in with you soon. Marquina, thanks. Tonight, Glendale police are looking for more possible victims of a music teacher accused of child sex abuse. CBS 2's Adriana Weingold is live now in Glendale where she's been talking to nervous parents. Adriana. 
Yeah, well, police are looking for more victims, fearing that this music teacher may have had interactions with other children. Meantime, parents say that they are concerned after learning about this music teacher's alleged crimes. Parents in Glendale are concerned tonight after hearing a local music teacher was arrested for sex crimes with a young boy. It's really terrifying. Of course, these parents put their children to this person's trust, um, thinking that they were enriching their child. Lives. Glendale police say 48 year old Harmic Hagverdian was arrested back on August 8th. He was booked for lewd and lascivious acts with a child under the age of 14. Police say Hagverdian had been under investigation for inappropriately touching an 11 year old boy during guitar lessons. Oh, well, he should definitely not have that school anymore and should probably remain in prison. Hagverdian is a teacher at New Generation Music School, and according to an old roommate, he also teaches private in-home lessons. At his music school in downtown Glendale near the Americana, you can see his picture on the poster. The door was locked, and it's unclear if Hagverdian has continued to teach since his arrest. But according to police records, he's out on bail. Justice needs to be served, and, you know, the, needs to go back to jail. Yeah. Now police want to know if there are more victims. And if you know anyone who may have been a victim of Hegbertian, you are asked to please call Glendale Police. We are live in Glendale, Adriana Weingold, CBS 2 News. Thank you, Adriana. We have developing news now from Laredo, Texas. Police say they have captured a suspected serial killer who is a U.S. Border Patrol agent. Juan David Ortiz is the prime suspect in the deaths of four prostitutes. He was arrested today after a kidnapped woman escaped and flagged down police. Angel star Albert Pujols is using his fame to raise awareness about human trafficking, a very serious issue here in Southern California and around the country. CBS 2's Jeff Wynn has details about a campaign called Strike Out Slavery. Tonight, fireworks lit up the night sky over Angel Stadium. But future Hall of Famer Albert Pujols and his wife Deidre want to draw your attention to something else. And the reality is like more slavery exists on the planet now than ever before in history. She's talking about human sex trafficking, which affects more than 40 million victims worldwide. In the United States, the estimate is well over 400,000. Albert says it was Deidre who's educated him on this. I didn't know the problem that these big issues that's happening, you know, globally and, you know, in our backyard too. Backyard is right. Look at this map that shows just how pervasive the problem is right outside Angel Stadium. That is why the couple formed an organization called Strike Out Slavery, which sponsored a resource fair before tonight's game. For the second year in a row, the idea was to connect families with groups like the Orange County Human Trafficking Task Force. Stacy Jewell will tell you she was sold for sex after she was abducted at a bus stop. We won't let our nine-year-olds and our five-year-olds go down the street and walk to school by ourselves. We, we're going to monitor that, but now monitor the social media, monitor the engagement. Experts say change will only happen when we re-examine what it means to be a man and eliminate the appetite for illicit sex. To be empathetic human beings in the world and to see women in a respectful lens, not as objects to be used for our own self-gratification and sexual pleasure. As families walk through a number of resource booths, kids were treated to fun activities activities like face painting as a start to a conversation over something Deidre Pujol says we can no longer turn a blind eye. We need people to hear the different capacities that this is happening so they can be aware. Not only is strikeout slavery in its second year, but it expanded last month by partnering with the Washington Nationals in Anaheim. Jeff Nguyen, CBS 2 News. Coming up, a deadly shark attack. All of a sudden, somebody yells, shark, shark. There were just a ton of people screaming, asking for help. Witnesses calling it something straight out of the movie Jaws. We'll tell you where it happened. Plus, struggling over a shotgun. A man called a hero after he confronted a suspect. And a helicopter makes a hard landing on a local golf course. Here from stunned witnesses. Marquina? Temperatures were cooler today. Suzanne, I'll let you know if that trend will continue. Coming up.